everyone, my name is Kurt Hoffman. I'm the author of the Human Elements poster that we're going to talk about today. I'm also an assistant professor of social work at Spring Arbor University in Spring Arbor, Michigan. Alright, so digging right in, the purpose of this video is simply to help you, give you kind of an insider's look on the nature of this poster, why I wrote it, uh, and how you might be able to use it in your life and in your profession. Alright, so the background for why I wrote this and what kind of spurned my uh, creativity to put it together was just recognizing that A, we don't have consensus at all on what a human being actually is, that we all define human beings differently. Um, and this kind of came out in the reality of just a lot of conversations with people, classes and so forth, where people say we need to treat people like human beings, treat people like whole people, affirm the dignity, all humans need to be treated like humans. And then when I would ask the question, okay, what is a human? Uh, there was great confusion or a lack of clarity. Um, more so, there was a lack of basis to even show that we are the same or equal. Um, so obviously that's a huge problem and part of that is fueled by some of the, the academic research and, and people that argue that human nature, um, well there really isn't a human nature, that it in fact is just determined by culture, by society or by different behavioral reinforcements or what have you. That there is no real human nature, we're just a blank slate. Um, and so the purpose of this poster is to kind of to counter that, to offer something more robust um, and that kind of counters that idea that there is no human nature. Uh, I hold that clearly there is a human nature um, and it's, um, it's a beautiful, wonderful whole thing and we all share it in common uh, all over the world. So in light of these different thinkers that kind of say human nature is determined, uh, I want to look at a particular argument that kind of springboards uh, how I wrote this. And the argument is that what's good for something is based on its nature. So what's good for a fish is based on the nature of a fish. What's good for a horse is based on the nature of a horse. So that's, just, that's exactly why if you saw me throw a horse into the lake, you would freak out and be mad at me for it because I'm drowning the horse and that's not nice. Uh, which is exactly true, but why isn't it good for the horse? Because it's not in the nature of the horse to live in the water. Conversely, if you saw me take my favorite pet guppy and put it in the lake, you would think it's a beautiful, wonderful thing because I'm letting the fish free, um, doing what's good for it according to its nature. So the same principle applies to human beings. What's good for, the, what's good for a human is based on the nature of a human. So we have to understand what a human being actually is, including of our very selves, um, before we can really do what's good for ourselves, before we can flourish or reach our potential, uh, and also before we can, can see that value and that worth in other humans uh, as well. So starting with just sameness, and this will also be seen in the other poster I wrote called The Unity of Human Diversity. Um, the, the fundamental thing of make, that makes us human, and what we are, is our consciousness, our cognitive abilities, the fact that we can think, and most specifically the fact that we have reason in us, that we have reason which allows us to think and allows us to uh, ask questions and seek and grow and understand and have meaning uh, and capture the meaning um, in life that, that's there. It's also the base for how we communicate and why we communicate. So while we might have different languages and different dialects, uh, the fact is that all those languages are still aiming to do the same thing. Communicate ideas and concepts, communicate uh, beliefs and values that come out of our thinking because we're all the same and we all think. Also is the order of the human personality that from our mind flows our emotions and our actions. This is how we can see two people can have the exact same experience but because they interpret them differently, they feel differently about them and they act differently in light of them. So the example I like to use is the idea of a spider coming down from the ceiling in between two people. And one person loves spiders and the other person absolutely hates spiders. So they both see the spider and immediately they interpret what's happening, they interpret their experience. And so they feel differently, one is freaking out and one is full of love and excitement. Um, and therefore the one that loves them reaches out and grabs it and wants to hold it and the other one runs to the other side of the room. So they have the exact same experience but because they have different thoughts and ideas about that spider um, therefore they have different feelings, different emotions and those emotions put them into motion to move and to act and behave differently. 
So there's kind of an order of the human personality. And I, I attest to you that, or suggest to you, that all human beings have this, that we all think and it flows into our feelings and it flows into our behavior. This is kind of seen as our sameness, as what we are as human beings. But in total on the poster, there's 20 different elements, including those that I just mentioned and, and many more, including our re relationality, our creativity, our capacity for adventure, um, our depth in us, that they're just, we're, we're deep. Human beings have depth and complexity beyond what is, is seen. Our physical differences as well as our uh, non-physical differences. And so in using this poster, the idea is for you uh, to help you see yourself as a whole person, to look at these elements and recognize where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. Different areas that you might be able to develop um, and invest in yourself to grow and to flourish and to reach your higher potential. But also to help you see the common humanity that you have with all other people and see all people as whole people and treat all people as whole people, recognizing that all human beings have these elements in common. Um, and with that, hopefully have some consensus of what it means to affirm the dignity, the value, the worth of people, as well as recognize the uniqueness and account for the strengths and the talents and the gifts that we all have as human beings. Because that's what's good for us as human beings. And the way that I think about humans starts with how I treat myself. And in applying this at a corporate level, whether you're an organization or a business or in a school or anything like that, we have to recognize that it's a great value and desire of people to have the human elements included in everything from policy to how businesses are run, um, to how marketing is done and advertising is done, that we include the human element, that we recognize people aren't just numbers, that people aren't just statistics, or we, we shouldn't just group people by all these different categories. Um, but include the human element, treat all people as whole people and affirm that of them, their capacity to choose uh, and recognize their value and worth. We can also recognize, as mentioned, these different strengths that we all have and with inside of these different elements um, that people love to use, what to do what they're good at and use the areas of their nature that they're strongest in. You'll use this poster to identify where your strengths are, where their strengths are, and let people play to the strengths. Um, to incorporate more of their whole self rather than just limiting them to them, limiting them to just a particular task. Um, but let that task be empowered and inspired by, you know, more of their unique uh, gifts and abilities, if you will. So anyways, just some ideas and I hope you have uh, many more ideas that come out of it and I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Peace.